In this video, I'm going to show you how to install what's known as a hypervisor on your PC. The process is the same for Mac or Windows. We're doing it on a Mac, as you can see. But I'm going to show you how to install a hypervisor, and that allows you to run what's called a virtual machine. And a virtual machine allows you to run an operating system that is different than the main operating system of your computer. So, for example, you can see here that we're using a Mac. However, we are going to install a virtual machine that is running Windows 10. It will run in a window. It's pretty remarkable, actually. And you're not limited just to Windows 10. If you have installation media for Windows 7, or for any of the variants of Linux, or for even Windows 3.1, or anything else that you'd like to try, you can set up a virtual machine that will run that operating system you will have a whole list of the installed virtual machine OS's that you have and you can just pick one and say start. It's a really incredible thing and it's not terribly difficult to do. Before we get to that, let's define some terms and let's see exactly how it is a hypervisor works. You can see here that hypervisors come in two types. We have a type 1 hypervisor and we have a type 2 hypervisor. With a Type 1 hypervisor, it runs directly on hardware. There is no host operating system. We will be installing what's known as a Type 2 hypervisor. It does require a host operating system, in our case, OS X, but you can run them on anything. But it has to have a host operating system. And regardless of whether you have a Type 1 hypervisor or a Type 2 hypervisor, you can then set up virtual machines within that and here I just there's three as an example but you can have as many virtual machines as you want you can have 10 or 20 or 100 however many that you have the resources to run you can run for this demonstration we'll be installing a Windows 10 virtual machine and in order to do that we will have to download the Windows 10 ISO and Microsoft has been good about this lately they are just happy to give stuff away for free no problem and you can actually download a copy of Windows 10 from this site. Now, be careful. If you look at the end of the URL for Windows 10, notice it says Windows 10 ISO. Sometimes people miss that I in there and they don't type it correctly. I'm going to put the links in the description, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. We will also be downloading Oracle's VirtualBox. That's the hypervisor that we're going to use to install Windows 10. We will also be installing some extensions and normally, for general use, these wouldn't be required. However, the extensions have some USB functionality that's very valuable. And so I think that it's important to, to uh, install those as well. I'll be showing you how to do that, and I'll step you through the process, but I just wanted to, to uh, give you a little fair warning before we start doing that. So first things first, at virtualbox.org, you can download the current version of VirtualBox. I don't know if you can see it because it's such small print, but the current version is 5.0. So if we click on that box, it will take us to the download page, and you can see that there are the various versions here that you can download for Windows, for OS X, for Solaris, for Linux. And here is the extension pack. And so I very strongly recommend that you not just download VirtualBox, but that you download the extension pack as well. And the installation process is standard. Just double click on the icon, follow the installation instructions, and then what you'll end up with in your applications folder, I have mine attached to the taskbar, is this guy right here at the bottom where it says VirtualBox. That's what the icon will look like. Once you have downloaded and installed VirtualBox, you will then want to download what's known as an ISO file of Windows 10. An ISO file is actually a bit-by-bit -bit replication of some other media. It also represents a uh, file system for optical media, but that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about. However, at this page, and again, I will put this link in the discussion, you can actually download a copy of the Windows 10 ISO. So you want to walk through the process of downloading and what you'll end up with is this as you can see over here Win10 underscore 1511 underscore 1 underscore English underscore x64 ISO. Once you have that you're actually ready to install Windows 10 
as a virtual machine in VirtualBox. So here is VirtualBox, and you can see I already have two virtual machines installed on this hypervisor. I have Windows 7 and I have Linux Mint. We're going to add one more, of course. This is going to be Windows 10. The process to do it isn't terribly involved. There are a lot of options and you can mess with them until you are blue in the face as long as you want. You are welcome to experiment. I encourage that. I'm going to walk you through the basic setup process for getting Windows 10 installed on a Mac. So the first thing we'll do, of course, is click New. And again, VirtualBox is very good at making it as easy as possible. So if we type in Windows 10, it takes care of filling in that other information for us. We'll click on Continue. Here it says the recommended memory size is, is uh, 2 gigabytes. I always like to increase that a little just to be sure. We'll go to 4096. And something else to keep in mind is that when we're setting aside memory and setting aside hard drive space, it's actually going to be using memory and hard drive space. So keep that in mind. If you set aside a gigabyte of hard drive space, that means a gigabyte of your actual hard drive is going to be used. That's how we're going to set this up. So just something to keep in mind. We'll click Continue. And here it gives you the option of adding a virtual hard disk. You do want to add one. You will need one. So click Create. Just accept this uh, default option, a VDI, a virtual box disk image. You don't have to worry about the other stuff there. Click Continue. And here you have the option of having it dynamically allocated or a fixed size. I always recommend a fixed size. Dynamically allocated can be slow. It can cause performance problems in the virtual machine. I don't like to have that. I like to know exactly how much space I have. So I click Fixed Size, Continue. They say 32, so you know what that means. I'm going to set it to 64. And then Create. It'll go through the process of setting aside the disk space for this virtual machine. And depending on the size of the virtual hard disk that you've created, it can take a while. You see here, for example, it says, uh, well, it's switching around a little bit there, typical of a progress bar, but around eight minutes, as you can see. So I'm going to let it go through the process. We'll fade out here, and I'll see you in one second. And here we are. After it finished creating the uh, virtual hard drive, you can see that now it says Windows 10 in our list of operating systems. We haven't installed anything. We haven't done any of that yet. But there is a space set aside, there's a machine set aside now for Windows 10. So let's configure it so that we can actually install that operating system. We'll need to click on this gear icon that says Settings. And name is Windows 10. You can rename it to something else if you don't want this to say Windows 10 or if it's a particular type of Windows 10, a developer edition of Windows 10 or something like that. But we're just going to leave it as Windows 10. And for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to leave everything else generally the same. But what we do need to click on is this here, storage. We are going to click on empty, and then we are going to click this disk icon here. And you can see it's already selected, but choose virtual optical disk file. We'll click on that, and our Finder window opens, select Windows 10, say Open, and then click OK. And now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to click on Start and actually begin installing Windows 10 into this virtual machine that is running on Oracle's VirtualBox hypervisor. So let's do that and see what happens. So already it says Windows 10 running, and look what, what we have here. We have the Windows logo right off the bat. That was pretty fast also. So let's see what happens. So if you're familiar with Windows setup, this is the standard initial setup screen that you see. We are going to stick with English United States and the US keyboard method, and then we will 
click Next, and uh, there's the Repair Your Computer many of us are familiar with, and we'll click Install Now. So just as if you were installing this on a standalone machine, you can see that it installs just like anything else. We'll say, I don't have a product key, and we will select Windows 10 Pro. Accept these terms. We always accept the terms. Then click Next. We will install, and there's the hard drive that we created. We'll click Next, and here we go. Now, if you've ever installed Windows before, you know that this automated process can take a very long time. So I am going to let it run uh, like we did before. We're going to fade to black, and I will see you in just a couple of seconds. So here we are. You don't want to boot from CD or DVD. Just let it go and do its thing. And it will go through the uh, boot up process again with the operating system that we installed, Windows in this case. If you note down at the bottom here, there is a hard drive icon and that indicates that it is accessing the hard drive and you will also see a little green dot sometimes on these other ones indicating that that is being accessed as well. So you can, you can get an idea of what's going on by following these notifications down here. So it went through its getting ready stage. Again, it says press any key to boot from the CD or DVD, and you can actually remove that from the drive that we assigned it to in the beginning when we did the setup. And another thing I should say is after it went through its uh, getting started stage there, the screen went black for a while. You just have to let it go, and it will eventually reboot. And so now we're back here again, and as you can see, we have the uh, standard setup interface for Windows 10. I choose customized settings here, not so much because of this. This doesn't bother me too much. It's because of this. Automatically connect to suggested open hotspots? No. Automatically connect to networks shared by your contacts? No. Automatically connect? No. I don't. This automatically connect is not for me. I would strongly advise turning that off. Again, it's completely up to you, but that's my advice. We'll say, next, none of this uh, is a big deal to me anyway, it may be to you. Be sure to read it and see what you think. But we click next, it says just a moment. There's a lot of long, drawn out just a moments when you're setting up Windows, by the way. Who owns this PC? I own it, so we'll go through the process quickly. I actually already have a Microsoft account. If you don't have one, then you will need to set one up in order to use Windows. It's standard for any operating system, really. So I will type it in. You didn't think I'd let you see any of this, did you? And then sign in. Just to let you know, they required that uh, I let them send me a text with a code in order to continue the installation process. I cut that part out, but be aware that you might have to do that as well. I will skip this step. You can set up a PIN if you're actually going to use it or use it on a shared machine or something like that. Of course, you'll want to set up a lock. Let's use Cortana. And if you've ever been through the Windows 10 setup process before, you'll be familiar with this. You'll be familiar with the font. You'll be familiar with the things that it's saying. You'll be familiar with the process that it goes through and the cycling blue colors in the background. So I will speed this up so you can still see what it says, but it may take a minute to get through even sped up. So I will talk to you in just a moment. Let's start. So here we are. We are running Windows 10 in a window 
on this Mac. And not only that, because I am using my own login credentials, it has actually transferred the wallpaper that I use on my other Windows machine to this one. That's exactly the same wallpaper that I have on both of the machines that run Windows 10. And you can use all of its features and all of its functionality. So if we click on the Start button, it's all here. If we say All Apps, this is everything that it comes installed with. There we go. Whoops. All apps. There we are. So you can see it's all there. It's still going through the startup process. The live tiles that it has, if you start Edge, so that you can download Firefox, well, you can do that as well also. Edge has a little ways to go. I like the direction they're heading with it, but it's just not as fully featured a browser as I would like right now. Close all. But there you go. And just like that, you can have Windows 10 running in a window on your machine. And you can do this with any operating system. If we close Windows 10, we'll say power and shut down, and it'll go through its uh, shutdown process. If you look here, here's Windows 7. I installed this previously. I'll click start. You don't need to worry about this. That's referencing the original installation media that I used. And if you're familiar with Windows 7, then you are familiar with this startup screen. It says starting Windows. Down here in the lower taskbar, again, you can see that the hard drive is being accessed. There's a little circle from Windows 7 that we all know and love. And here we are, Windows 7 running in a window on the Mac. And there we go. And just as it was with Windows 10, we have full functionality of Windows 7 here. So we'll close this down, and I'll show you one more very quickly. If you've ever wanted to experiment with Linux, wonder what the big deal is, there are various incarnations of Linux. There is Ubuntu Linux and Debian, and there is a Linux Mint that I have here. And so if I click on that and say Start, it's exactly the same thing. So you can see I have multiple virtual machines, each one running its own operating system on the Mac. You don't have to have dedicated hardware. You don't have to have you know, four machines to run four operating systems. You can do all of it right here on your own machine. And if you have a Windows machine and you want to try Linux or any other operating system, you can do that. If you have Linux and you want to try Windows or OS X or whatever it is, and you have access to installation media, then you're able to do that. It's a really excellent way to expand and expand significantly the capabilities of any machine that you're using. You don't have to buy fancy software or software you have to subscribe to or anything that's really expensive. You can just use VirtualBox, install any operating system you want. Over here, I actually have the installation media for Ubuntu, and the process is exactly the same. VirtualBox will step you through it regardless of which one it is. And you can download Linux distributions for no charge. So experiment with that. I hope it expands your productivity and that you have fun with it. And if you have any questions, then let me know. Have fun.